I know, you'd like to join your fellows outside and howl at the moon. But you're serving a much better purpose. Yes, you're serving science through me. Quite comfortable, Petra? Sure, Doctor. You're not afraid? I ain't got no reason to be afraid. Yeah, that's right, Petra. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing at all. Peter, I'm trying a new formula. I wouldn't want you to make a sudden move and fall off the couch. Now, don't worry. It'll only be for a little while. How do you feel now? I feel just like I always did when you stick me with that thing. I'm kind of sleepy. Oh, I'm sleepy. Gentlemen, I wish you were here to see the proof of my that the transfusion of blood between different species is possible. A few moments ago, Petro was a man, a harmless, good-natured man. Look at him now. no longer human. He's a wolf, snarling, ferocious, lusting for the kill. You're looking at a scientific miracle, gentlemen. You're a madman, Cameron. Your claim is ridiculous. That's exactly what you said in the newspapers, isn't it, Professor Blaine? That I was a madman, not fit to occupy a science chair at the university. Perhaps you'll change your mind one day, soon, when Petro tears at your throat. Poppycock. You may laugh if you want to. But look! <laughs> Even now, he'd like to be at his work. My catalytic agent has brought about a complete transition from man to wolf. 
crazy experiments are a disgrace to science. Yes. Those are the very words you used in denouncing me to the faculty. Professor Fitzgerald. Science. What do you know about science? You with your hidebound dogmas and shriveled mind that refuses to recognize progress. What has progress to do with your foolish tampering with nature? I'm glad you asked that question, Professor Hatfield. You also were one of those stupid fools who raised their voices against me. You're aware, of course, that this country is at war. That our armed forces are locked in combat with a savage horde who fight with fanatical fury. Well, that fanatical fury will avail them nothing when I place my new serum at the disposal of the War Department. Just picture, gentlemen, an army of wolf men, fearless, raging, every man a snarling animal. My serum will make it possible to unloose millions of such animal men. Men who are governed by one collective thought, the animal lusts to kill without regard to personal safety. Such an army will be invincible, gentlemen. Such an army will sweep everything before it. Your scheme is too utterly fantastic, Dr. Cameron. You're fools, all of you. Poor, blind fools, especially you, Dr. Warwick. Assuming that what you say is true, how would you control these wolf men? I perfected an antidote that induces the return of immediate normalcy. And I suppose that uh, it would be an easy matter to round up a million wild animals and administer an antidote. No, Cameron, you're mad. Stark, raving mad. And I, for one, am in favor of... Silence! I'm not interested in your imbecilic mouthings. You all of you demonstrated your lack of vision by demanding my resignation from the faculty. Well, you accomplished your purpose. You cast me out. You robbed me of everything that I held most dear in life. Position, honor, respect. You branded me as a madman, held me up to ridicule before the whole world. Now it's time for my revenge. Pedro will see to that. Now you shall pay for your folly. There's no escape for any of you. You shall die one by one at the hands of the scientific marvel that you scoffed at. You can't intimidate us with fantastic threats. You're a faker, Cameron, a mad faker. We'll have you ostracized by every scientist in the country. There are institutions for madmen, and we'll see that you're confined in one. Evening, Miss Lenora. 
Petro. Well, Night Owl, I was just coming down to find out how much longer you're going to work. Do you realize how late it is? No, I didn't. I was absorbed in my work. Oh, we did a lot of work tonight, and I slept almost an hour, and I had the awfulest dream I could... Go to bed, Petro. Yes, sir, Doctor. Good night, Miss Lenore. Good night, Petro. Dad, what kind of experiments are you doing that you need Petro? Oh, he just helps me in the laboratory, moving the heavy things around. He's a very strong man, is Petro. How much longer are we going to be here, Dad? Why? Because the place gets on my nerves. I hate it. Your hating it has nothing to do with being separated from that young reporter friend of yours, has it? It has. And I want to know when we're going back to the city. Very soon now, dear. My work's practically finished. What was that? What? Well, that noise. It sounded like a wild animal howling. And I heard the same thing last night. Oh, that's probably some dog in the neighborhood. Dogs do howl, you know. You mustn't let things like that upset you. Now, come along, dear. Even a scientist needs some sleep. And I shall sleep very soundly tonight. Good morning, Petro. Good morning, Miss Lenora. I was hoping you'd come to the garden this morning. I got something for you. Oh, they're lovely. Thank you. I'll pick them for you every day if you like them. Well, that's very kind of you. What's the matter, Miss Lenora? Petro, I don't like this place. No, I guess you feel about this place the same as I do. I'm a fear of it. Especially at night when the mist comes up out of the swamp. Of course, it's all right when the sun's shining like it is this morning. Are there any wild animals around here? Oh, yes, um, there's lots of them. How come, you ask? Oh, I was just curious. Say, Petro, what do you do when you work with Dad in the laboratory? Well, I don't rightly know. Besides, I ain't supposed to tell nothing. Your pop made me promise. Oh, well, you can trust me. I wouldn't tell anybody. Well, we... No, I ain't saying nothing. Good morning, dear. Good morning, Dad. You sleep well? Yes, very well. Well, look at the flowers that Pedro gathered for me. Very pretty. I'm afraid you'll have to give up your gardening for the time being, Pedro. I want you in the laboratory. But, Doc, if I don't keep at this stuff, how am I ever going to make it look pretty? And I like pretty things. We shall leave this place long before you're able to beautify it. Gardening really isn't very important. Come along with me. Now, Pedro, I see you're waiting for me. You scared me, Doc. Scared you? Why? You mustn't be so jumpy. You're as nervous as that wolf. He sure is nervous, all right. I've been sitting here for a long time watching him, and he ain't been still a minute. <laughs> all right, lie down, Pedro. Are you going to strap me down again tonight, Doc? Well, certainly. It's more necessary tonight than ever before. Gee, it must be great to be educated. I wish I had a lot of book learning so I could understand what this is all about. Fortunately, you don't need education or intelligence for your part of the experiment. Just strength. Animal strength. Now lie down, we'll get to work.
the animals are terrible nervous tonight for some reason or other. The old plow mule liked to kick my head off. I come up behind her sort of quiet like and she lashed out with both feet. It's the devil mist in the swamp land. I can smell evil in it. Oh, will you stop talking like that? I'm so nervous now I could scream. See, Mommy, I'm all ready. Oh, that's fine. Now you hop in bed. Can I put in my ball just for a little while? Well, just for a little while. But mind, if you ain't in bed by the time I do my dishes, I'm going to tan you good. Don't worry, I'll be in bed and fast asleep by that time. Good night. Good night. anything so awful in my life. What are you talking about? Something took after me down in the swamp. What was it? I don't know whether it was a man, a beast, or old Satan himself. Have you been drinking? Not a drop, so help me. I let him have both barrels of my shotgun, but that ain't even slowed him down. No, you can't kill him no way, except with a silver bullet. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was something awful. Lay down on that couch. Lay down! Again? Yes, you have. You'd better go to bed. I'm sorry if I made a nuisance of myself. I wish I wouldn't walk in my sleep like that, because I have such bad dreams. Don't be upset about your dreams, Petro. 
You have been of great assistance to me tonight. Very great assistance. In fact, I'm going to reward you by taking you to the city with me. You mean I can go along with you and ride in the car? Yes. While we're in the city, we'll make calls together. First, we will call upon a pompous gentleman called Blaine. Professor Blaine. Good morning, Pedro. Good morning, Miss Lenora. Will you do me a favor? You know I'd do anything for you. Well, I want you to mail this letter for me when you go into the village. And it's already stamped. Yes, ma'am. I'll take that letter. Dad. Give me that letter. So you couldn't wait till my work was finished. You felt you had to write to your reporter. Well, I just wanted to tell him that I was safe. If you remember, you made me go away without even saying goodbye. There was a reason for that, my dear, a very good reason. See anything of them? No. Not much use looking now. It's daylight, and the only prowls at night. Maybe he's seen something. Yeah, take that. Good morning. Why all the armament? We're looking for a wild varmint, what killed a little child. Been looking all night. You mean someone was killed by a wild animal? Yes, yeah. my little girl. Oh, how terrible. How did it happen? It come in through the window. My wife said the window was closed, but she must have been mistaken. She didn't try to take the baby away or nothing. It just seemed to kill just for the love of killing. Did anyone see the animal? Jed Harper did. He said it walked on its hind legs like a man, but that don't make sense. I don't care whether it makes sense or not. I know what I've seen. Come on, man, we got work to do. What do you make of it, Dad? A predatory animal that opens windows. That would be very interesting to science, wouldn't it? Dominant urge is to kill and destroy even when unprovoked. A human characteristic translated into animal instinct. Animals rarely killed except for food or in self-defense. The eminent professor, Dr. Blaine, would be interested to study such an amazing animal, wouldn't he? Come on in, Tom. Glad to see you. Good evening, Dr. Blaine. I came in through the garden so as not to disturb your housekeeper. Sit down. Even if Martha has dozed off, which I think she has, a full alarm of fire wouldn't disturb her. <laughs> I have a faint suspicion that there is something besides my housekeeper's welfare around your mind. What is it? Well, I'm after a story. Well, quite a normal pursuit for a newspaper man. <laughs> An AP dispatch from Ashton down in the swamp country tells about a child being killed by a wild animal. Well, that's a tragic thing. Yes, sir. A neighboring farmer saw the brute and swears that it traveled at a terrific speed on its two hind legs. I understand they make a very potent corn liquor in that district. Oh, no, no. It's nothing like that. I have a hunch there's more to this story than just a jug full of corn liquor. I hope that you could give me an angle I could work into a Sunday feature. I don't know what you mean by an angle. The possibility of the survival in the depths of the swamp are some of those overgrown lizards that used to be head men on Earth. I understand they traveled around on their hind legs and made our present-day public enemies look like horticultural specimens. I'm sorry, Tom. I can't lend myself to that sort of sensationalism. True science, the search for knowledge, is on a far higher plane than that. It is worthy of being treated with dignity. And I feel that I owe an obligation to the people who respect my opinion. Your uh, angle, as you call it, on prehistoric lizards is utterly fantastic. I'm sorry. I. Didn't know I was getting into such deep water. Well, I'll hang my head in shame and slink away. No, no, no harm's done. Don't take it so to heart. Put your feet up on the desk and stay for a while. Well, I can't now. I've got to get back to the office. But I'll drop around again. Thanks very much for the information. I didn't give you very much. See you again, boy. Blaine, 
surprised to see me? Yes, I confess I am. Come in, sit down. Thank you. You shouldn't be surprised, Blaine. I told you that I'd come back when I could prove my theory to your complete satisfaction. You say you've proven that wild theory? Well, I'm here. You don't think I enjoyed your comments so much that I came back merely to hear you repeat them? Any comments I made were an expression of honest opinion. I will retract any statement proven to be untrue. Do you think that will cancel your obligation? Do you think a retraction will pay me for the humiliation of being held up to public ridicule? For having my scientific reputation blasted? For being forced to resign from an honorable position? I deeply regret any possible injustice. But my rejection of your theory was not intended as a personal persecution. I'm sorry, I... I apologize, Dr. Blaine. I suppose we're all prone at times to lose sight for the true perspective. Well, let's say no more about it. I'll gladly consider anything in support of your theory. I'm not asking you to take my word for anything. Just to believe the evidence of your own eyes. Petro! Pedro, you sit here. This is my guinea pig. You're aware of the nature of this experiment? We've been doing this a long time. You may rest assured the experiment is a proven success. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. What good can come with tampering with the normal laws of nature? A great deal of good. An invincible army, for one thing. You'll understand when you see the results. I abhor whatever appears to be a perversion of science. Mingling the blood of man and beast is downright sacrilege. I have no sympathy with such maudlin sentimentality. I propounded a theory which you denounce publicly as being ridiculous. The result of a disordered mind. Are you trying to squirm out of facing the possibility that you may be wrong? Not at all. I will cooperate in any way possible. That's just what I wanted to hear. I've given him one injection to prepare his blood for the transfusion. He'll need another in exactly 20 minutes. Magnolia 37136. I'd like to speak to Dr. Lorenzo Cameron, please. Uh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Cameron. For me? Hello? Oh, is that you, dear? You asked me to call you and find out if you're returning tonight. It's all right. I'll be over as soon as I can. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's my daughter and some friends. I'll have to go and get her. I shan't be long. What about the second injection? You said it had to be given in 20 minutes. Oh, yes, the injection. I may be able to make it. If not, I want a doctor whether you'd do it for me. Why, uh, yes, I guess so. That's very, very kind of you. Pedro, you stay here and don't bother Dr. Blaine. No, sir, I won't bother. Of course, it's quite possible, Doctor, if I don't get back, that you could ensure the failure of this demonstration by forgetting the injection. I'll have to take that chance. Don't worry. Even if I lacked a sense of honor, pride would hardly allow me to stoop to such a level. I shall give him the injection if you're not here by 12. At 12, precisely. That you, Blaine? Well, what do you want to drag me out of bed this time of the night for? I've just had a surprising visitor, Lorenzo Cameron. He claims to have proven his crazy outlandish blood transfusion theory and demands the right to give a demonstration. 
Yeah. No, we, no. No, he's not here now. He'll be back after a while. Why don't you come on over? All right. I'll get dressed and be over right away. Expect me in about 10 minutes. Are you at all familiar with the work Dr. Cameron is doing? Oh, no, sir. I'm just handyman around the place. Nobody, not even Miss Lenora, knows what he does. Oh, his daughter is still with him? Oh, yes, sir. She's with him. But I think she's lonesome. She seems to be grieving about something. Oh, that's an outrage. Cameron has no right to accept such a sacrifice from her. Oh, I don't like being a busybody, but she's such a fine girl, and a certain young man is just the tonic she needs to make her happy. Where do they live? Oh, uh, Dr. Cameron rented the old Danfield Homestead house about four or five miles from Ashton. It was a fine place, but ain't been nobody lived there for a long time, and the weeds kept growing closer to the house till they about swallowed up everything. Oh, hello, Fitzgerald. Oh, Dr. Cameron, I heard you were back in town. Blaine just told me that you wanted to demonstrate the proof of your blood transfusion theory. He exaggerated when he mentioned demonstration. I told him I could prove my claim. I don't think Professor Blaine is in a cooperative frame of mind. That's why I came to you. What do you want me to do? I'd like you to be present when I talk to him. All right. I'll take a walk over with you. You know, uh... I heartily disapprove of the nature of this experiment, but my promise to Dr. Cameron leaves me no alternative. Sure. Roll up your sleeve. How do you feel? Just like I always do. I'll be all right after I rest a minute. Maybe we'd better go in the house. Just a moment. What's the matter, Gunk? Oh, a slight heart attack. You want me to call an ambulance? No, I don't want an ambulance. I'll be all right in a minute. Oh, well, just trying to help. Thank you. 
What's that? Sounded like come from the house. Come on in here. There's something wrong. I'll say there's something wrong. Give me police headquarters and make it fast. Hello, Sarge. This is Dugan. I got a murder on my beat. Right away. That's the work of an animal, not of a human being. What do you know about this? How can I know anything? I was with you. Officer, my heart's beginning to trouble me again. I can't be of any use here. I may as well leave. Sure, go ahead. I can't pretend to feel any great sorrow. But then my feelings are of no importance one way or the other. Good night. Howdy, Lieutenant. Howdy. I've seen a lot of murders in my day, but never as messy as this one. This should make a gory enough story for your paper? This is more than just a story to me. He was my friend. There was a couple of college professors arguing outside and using a lot of big words. They followed me in here. And I heard one of them say that some kind of a dangerous animal done this killing. Well, how could a dangerous animal be roaming around the city? Well, I don't know. Unless he got away from a zoo or a circus or something. I'll check on that angle. Talking to me? No, no, I was just trying to remember something. Ashton. I got it. An AP story came in from Ashton the other day about a, about a child being killed by a weird animal from the swampland. What do you mean, weird animal? A farmer swore it wasn't human, but that it traveled on two legs like a man. Oh, he was crazy, a drunk. There ain't no such animal. Anyway, how could he get way up here? I wish I knew. something in the mist coming up out of the swamp. It's like a voice talking to me, telling me to do something, something terrible. Oh, but that isn't real. It, that's just your imagination. You mustn't pay any attention to what that voice seems to be saying. Pedro! What are you doing here? Go to your room. You've no right in this part of the house. Get out! Immediately! Dreaming. I don't know what's come over me. I must have a touch of swamp fever. That's very likely. Now go to bed. I'll get something for you. Yes, sir. I'm sorry if I made a nuisance of myself. Dad, what happened to Pedro? I'm terribly afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of, dear. He just had a touch of fever, that's all. Well, that was more than fever. Well, his eyes were the eyes of a wild beast. He was possessed by a demon. Oh, dear, you know there's no such thing as being possessed by a demon. That's England's superstition. Well, I don't care what you call it, Dad. But there's something here that's evil. It's real, and I can feel it. And I'm afraid. Dad, I can't stand it here any longer. Let's get away. I can't go now, dear. I must wait till my work's finished. Put yourself together, dear. Oh, I won't be silly anymore. Nothing must interfere with your work. You've been a very great comfort to me. I know what a terribly lonely life this must be for you. Well, we won't talk about it anymore, Dad. 
I just want you to prove that you're the greatest scientist in the world. They'll soon have all the proof they want. I expect the eminent Professor Fitzgerald to pay me a call before long, and I shall be delighted to confound him with scientific facts that he declared were impossible. <laughs> now you go to bed, dear, huh? And have a good night's rest. Good night, dear. I'll look after Pedro. Good night, dear. Cameron. So, you're the owner of this, this haunted castle. What do you mean, haunted castle? Well, maybe I did just have the jitters, but I thought something was prowling around out there. Did you see anything? No, and I'm not even positive I heard anything. Just, just a feeling. <laughs> That's not very definite, is it? <laughs> Hello. Uh, it's good to see you. Can you ever forgive me for going off without saying goodbye? That doesn't matter, now that I've found you. I see no reason for rejoicing. Dad. I buried myself in this out of the way place so that I could work undisturbed. Away from snooping reporters. To only ridicule what they have not the intelligence to understand. I had no thought of ridicule in coming here. I'm not interested in your reasons for coming. But I would like to know how you happened to find your way here. I found a message from Dr. Blaine after he was killed. Dr. Blaine killed? Oh, how terrible. Yes, apparently he was killed by some animal. You knew about it? I was with Professor Fitzgerald when it happened, and I saw him right afterwards. What was the message? A memorandum to tell me about this old plantation. So he meant to betray my confidence, just as he did before. Well, I don't believe Dr. Blaine had any such thought in mind. I don't care what you profess to believe. You belong to a profession that's obnoxious to me, and you're not welcome here. Dad, I Keep quiet. I won't keep quiet. Now, I've stayed here because I thought you needed me. But I won't have you treat Tommy like this. Now, now, don't get upset on my account. Things will turn out all right. I suppose you have a right to your own opinion. Good night. Tom, wait. Don't go now. Wait till daylight. Why? Well, I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Well, I don't know exactly, but there's something dangerous that prowls around in the dark. And I wish you wouldn't take this trip alone. Don't worry about me. If I meet anything I can't whip, I can do a swell job of running. I'll be around tomorrow whistling at your front gate. If you have a front gate. Good night. I wish you'd wait till morning. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Good night. Good night. Ed. If anything happens to him, I'll never forgive you. He had no business to come here. I'm not responsible for his welfare.
Howdy. Sorry to bother you this time of night, but I've lost my way. Come on in. Sit down. You're a fool to be traveling around by yourself at night like this when the mist comes up from the swampland. Oh, you mean the mysterious night prowler that's got everyone's imagination working overtime? That ain't imagination with me, mister. That thing killed my little girl. Sorry, I, I wouldn't have joked if I'd known. It scared Jed Harper so bad, he went and got religion. Well, say, can you give me some facts about this killer? What does it look like? No one can tell you that for sure, mister. Because it never prowls only on nights like this when the mist is thick and nothing can be seen very plain. Jed Harper said it traveled on two legs. But you can't count on that because Jed was scared half out of his mind. Besides, the mist was extra thick that night. You better stay here the rest of the night, mister. I can't offer you a bed, but I'll make you as comfortable as I can. Well, thank you very much. Cage, you're of no further use to me. If you revert without my knowledge, you become dangerous. I hadn't thought of that possibility. On your couch, Pedro. <laughs> Down! Disappoint Professor Fitzgerald. I walk in my sleep again? Yes. Doctor, ain't there some way you could cure me from doing that? I'm afraid not. It may be necessary to, to lock you up at night after this. Oh, it don't seem fair to lock a man up just like he was an animal. Appleton started home with the jug under his arm last night. They found him in the swamp this morning. He'll never lift another jug. Was he murdered? Yep, and he wasn't a pretty sight to look at, neither. There must be some natural explanation for this thing you're talking about. It's a werewolf. You can't kill him no way except by a silver bullet. Well, I can't see myself giving that story to the city editor. He told me right out of my ear. That killer ain't human. You'd know that from one look at the body. I saw a victim of just such an attack. I wonder if there could be a possibility of any connection between them. I've been telling you all along. It's a form of a human who sold his soul to the devil. In the light of day, he walked like any other man on the earth. At night, he takes on the form of a wolf. 
Then you never heard of any killings by strange animals around here until recently. Why does he keep asking me all them questions? Oh, all newspaper men are like that. He doesn't mean anything by it. Well, you go ahead. He won't bother you anymore. Yes, sir. Lenora, you must give some thought to your own safety and peace of mind. There's no normal reason for Dr. Cameron to hide away in a place like this unless... Unless what? Oh, nothing. Forget it. But don't avoid the question. What were you going to say? Lenora, I believe your father knows something about that creature responsible for the horrible killings in this vicinity. And I think the same creature killed Professor Blaine. Well, that's a terrible thing for you to say. I didn't expect you to join the chorus against him. Oh, I hope I'm wrong, but... I'll do everything I can to learn the truth, no matter where it leads. Good morning, young man. I'm very glad to see you. I want to apologize for the way I talked to you last night. Oh, well, that's all right. I, I can understand how you must feel about the newspapers. They didn't, what do you call, hang on to their punches. <laughs> Pull their punches. I know, they gave you quite a ride. But I didn't write any of that stuff. Oh, I know, I know. That's why I, I'm so sorry the way I received you. If you're interested in scientific research, I'd be glad sometime to show you what I've accomplished. Well, thanks, Doc. That's very nice. And now, if you'll pardon me, I'll leave Lenora to entertain you. Okay. That doesn't sound as if he has a secret to hide, does it? Why, no. And I never before was so glad to be wrong. Way down here. Hello, Lenora. Your father wrote asking me to come. Is he here? Yes, and he'll be very glad to see one of his old friends. Ah, Fitzgerald, this Doctor? is an unexpected honor. I hardly dared hope that you'd accept my invitation. Well, if you've made a worthwhile scientific discovery, I want to be the first to congratulate you. I should be delighted to give you that opportunity. Well, the things that you two have to talk over are way over my head, so I'll leave you alone. Oh, now, don't run away. I promise to limit myself to words of two syllables. <laughs> <laughs> That'll take all the fun out of the discussion. I'll see you after a while. Hey. Shall we go into the lab? You wish. You're very secretive about your work. I have to be to keep out intruders. You seem to be excellently equipped. Now, good tools are the first requisite of good work. Sit down, Mr. Professor. Thanks. I've discovered that certain extremely volatile elements in the blood, little more than particles of electrical energy, are the source of all physical growth and mentality by exciting the various glands and brain cells. I've learned how to extract and concentrate these elements from the blood of various animals. I can control evolution. I've discovered the source of life. You're crazy. <laughs> that has a familiar ring. You told the newspapers I was crazy once, didn't you? I didn't know that you invited me here to reopen an old controversy that was very disagreeable to all concerned. I came with the hope that you'd abandon impossible theories and accomplish something worthy of consideration. And I suppose you feel yourself fully competent to judge my accomplishments. You and your hidebound associates. Hatfield, Warwick, and Blaine. No, not Blaine. He no longer is passing judgment on my sanity. I believe you know something about Blaine's death. You were at his house. But you talked to him on the telephone before I came to your house. Did he say then that he was in any danger of losing his life? No. Nothing threatened him at that time. And I was with you when he was killed. You pride yourself on not indulging in fantastic theories. What proof have you that I was in any way implicated in Blaine's death? I have no definite proof. You accuse me of being crazy for what I claim to have accomplished with this apparatus. 
that I can give you overwhelming proof of what I say. I can inject into your veins a substance that will give you the strength of ten men. Or, following the line of evolution, how would you like a pair of donkey's ears? <laughs> That'd go well with your type of mentality. I certainly will not be the subject for any of your experiments. And I'm afraid it's useless for us to continue this discussion any further. You're not leaving, are you? I see no reason for staying. Open that secret panel. So you don't care to stay and be convinced that you were wrong? I don't care to be ridiculed by a charlatan. Ah, ridicule. That isn't pleasant, is it? I know from experience. I had nothing to do with that. It wasn't my fault if the public treated your crazy theories with the ridicule they deserved. Still, well... Would you do me a favor? What is it? I have to send my hired man into town. Would you mind taking him with you? All right. I can do that without any trouble. Oh, thank you so much. If you'll wait at the car, I'll send him out to you in a few minutes. I'll get in the car, Peter. Don't keep Professor Fitzgerald waiting. I should have known this trip would be a waste of time. I still hope to give you proof that you can't ignore. Remember me to Hatfield and Warwick when you see them again. Why did Professor Fitzgerald leave so soon? He wasn't impressed by the possibilities of my line of research. Oh, well, don't be disappointed. There's no credit to his intelligence. You're a great scientist, and someday you're going to startle the world. You're right, dear. I'll startle the world. Sounded like it came from over there.
this. Jail. Is he dead? He's still alive, but unconscious. Where can we take him? You can take him over to my place, but the old Danfield house is handier. We'll take him there. I don't know how badly he's hurt. Why don't you men go for a doctor? Come on, give me a hand. Take, take it easy, fellas. Dad, please come to dinner. You know I don't like to eat alone. No, I'm not very hungry. You go ahead with your meal. Are you feeling discouraged because Professor Fitzgerald was well, unsympathetic? <laughs> Fitzgerald's opinion is of very little value. Yeah. I'll answer the door. Come on in. Tom, what happened? I found Professor Fitzgerald badly hurt. Oh, bring him in. Take him upstairs. Tom, how is it happen? He's another victim of that mysterious werewolf, or whatever it is. One of the men went after a doctor. He should be here before long. Well, there's nothing more we can do here, so we'll keep hunting for that killer. You don't need to come down with us, ma'am. We can find our way out. Good evening, sir. That devil got another victim. Yeah, so I see. I was surprised to see Professor Fitzgerald in this neighborhood. He came to see me. Not that be the hurt. I don't know yet. We'll find out as soon as the doctor gets here. When he regains consciousness, we'll find out who or what has committed these horrible killings. Yes. It'll be very interesting to hear what he has to say. This awful thing happened to him. I can't feel any resentment over the way he treated you. Did you quarrel with him? Yes, we quarreled. So I suppose you think that I ran after him and dragged him out of the car. Dad! Newspaper training seems to be the suspicious nature. I wasn't trying to antagonize him. He didn't give me a chance to finish. I was just going to ask him if anyone was with Fitzgerald when he left here. Well, I can answer that. Petro was with him. Petro? Yes, he drove him into town. But surely you don't think that... Oh, I don't know what to think. But I will know as soon as Fitzgerald comes, too. I'm inclined to agree with Dad about your imagination. It's fantastic. Maybe so. But didn't it strike you funny that we didn't find Petro around when we found Fitzgerald? Look, darling, please don't snap at me just for trying to add things up. I'm sorry. He's still unconscious. Oh, he must regain consciousness, even if only for a few minutes. So much depends upon him. That must be the doctor. Well, I'll go down with you. I'm glad you got here. I'm glad to get inside. There's a humdinger of a storm coming up. Where's the patient? Upstairs. Ah, oh, good evening, doctor. Will you go right on up? You stay down here, dear. There's nothing you can do. 
I hate to leave you, but I must question Fitzgerald as soon as he's able to talk. <sighs> Reckon it's a little late for me to help. The man's dead. Dead? Yes, that's too bad. We were hoping he'd throw some light on a matter of great importance. Well, I'll be getting back to town before this storm gets worse. I'll send the coroner out. I can't be bothered with any more of your questions. They're only prompted by your fantastic imagination. I'm starting to leave at once. Wait, you'll do some more talking, whether you like it or not. You're making yourself very unpleasant. I haven't even started yet to be unpleasant. If my hunch is correct, I'll prove you guilty of murder. And in the meantime, I'll get Lenora out of this madhouse. You will prove nothing. My daughter stays here with me. Here, I'll go get it. 